everybody, let's get started. Y'all ready to get started? Everybody ready? Attention, everyone. Attention, everyone. Attention, everyone. All right, everybody ready to get started? Yeah. Are y'all really ready to get started?
we got to give a quick shout out because you see the little uh, uh, display in the back, the purple, mm -hmm. matches this purple shirt. And uh, I think I ate a couple more desserts than I probably should have, <laughs> uh, but they were delicious. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Shout out. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Houston. I am the deputy director of community engagement with the Office of America Right. Right. Okay. So I represent South and here. Every time I see your hair is growing, man, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs>
everybody. Fun mention, I'm Michael Blair, board member of the OPMA as well. Um, so again, welcome. And uh, we're going to move on to a few things. And uh, what's my agenda? What's next? Uh, oh, let me ask a question real quick. Who has been living in Oak Park the most amount of years? Me, because I was there 40 years. How many? 40? <laughs> yeah, I came here 40 years. So. Anybody you got beat a 40, better than 40 than that? No, I'm working on 1032. Oh, you know, I'm all, yeah, I'm all 41. I was long for 10 years. You know, I was, he, he had to beat you by one sheet. <laughs> <laughs> So 
We do cater. Um, we also do, we are not doing deliveries to Oak Park yet, but that might be on the horizon. And we're also thinking about beyond baked goods and coffee and espresso. We're thinking about doing like lunch items in the future too. So I don't know if you know anyone like who works on the Med Center campus, or if you are passing by, please stop in. You're totally, it's open to the public. You're allowed to go into the Miami Institute building. Um, and it's a really cool place because the building where we're located is one of the nationwide leaders in research on autism and other disabilities. Um, so I, I know um, we have a representative from UCD here. We have to give major props to UCD because they're giving us the space for free to do the work that we're doing. They're giving us you know, a lot of information. Um, and I, I have also been on the board of a neighbor association, so I don't want to take up a lot of your time. But I wanted to make myself available. Like I'm not going to every neighborhood of Sacramento. I'm, I'm, you guys are special. Like I'm going to, go here <laughs> to like introduce myself and ask if you have any questions for us. It's okay if not, but if you do, I'd love to answer them. Oh, what hours are you open? Thank you. I should have mentioned that. See, I'm still learning. So we are open from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. But we'll cater at other times uh, as well, for sure. Yeah. Do you, do you have a, a relationship with any Sacramento roasteries, or um, like where, where, where are you getting your co coffee? Or we do not, actually. We are getting, we're hoping to get set up on the, um, the university's ordering system, but we also have purchased coffee locally. We're really big into local and organically sourced, you know, um, products. And so uh, I would be interested to connect with, with more. Yeah, yeah, like there, there's uh, naked, naked on um, Naked coffee? Yeah. That's yeah, good. Yeah, and, I, 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 there are a bunch, bunch more, um, and like there are even smaller, you know, roasters that could maybe occasionally supply you with stuff to, you know, fill a gap with, you know, the university ordering system that has an issue or something. I appreciate that. We actually, we're, we're still getting set up on it, so I might, I might do that. Yeah, so I, like price point, you know, comes up a lot of folks in the neighborhood. That's important. Yes. That's important for me. Uh, what's the price point generally for, you know, the beverage items and then the baked items? Oh, that's a great question. No, not many people ask, but I'm glad you did. So, um, vast majority of our baked goods are at three dollars. Wow. Um, the more expensive ones are three fifty. So we try to keep prices low. Bear in mind that ingredients for vegan and organic goods are like way more expensive, so we're not making a profit. I mean, we're not supposed to make a profit, but we're not making a profit off of it. <laughs> anyway, um, in terms of our drinks, I believe most are under $4, too. So they're very, they're like in line with what you'd expect, if not cheaper. Um, and if you get catering from us, we reduce the price heavily, too, because our, our goal is not to make profit, it's just to provide jobs. So is the business technically a non-profit? Okay. And, um, and do you also have cold brew coffee? That's an awesome question. Yes, so uh -huh. we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, the IRS views us as an employment training program. And we are, I mean, we definitely are, but the way we do that is by being identical to a small business. That's where we feel like people are going to learn how to actually work mm -hmm. in that kind of environment. So we are very supportive to our employees, but and from the day to day, you wouldn't be able to necessarily tell that we're a nonprofit. So, do you have cold brew? Is your shop have yes. cold brew? Yes, we did start doing cold brew. Okay. Um, we've got so many products that I'm even just finding out. We just started doing pumice now, too. We're constantly innovating new products, but I'm like a little bit behind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, cold brew is a bummer. So, if you do start making a profit, do you reinvest it in your business, or where is that money going to if you make? Yes. That's a great question. I think that's what people get kind of hot, like, confused about, right? It's like you're a nonprofit, but you're also this kind of like small business looking thing. So what we do is we we will hire as many people as possible. That is our goal. So at some points in the year, we've had more employees than we, we honestly need. But that's it's just constantly being reinvested. And at this point, we've been able to calculate that every dollar that like a customer spends goes towards a dollar fifty in wages to the employees. Um, wow. So it's very much generative and you know and so that's why we are seeking support from from the neighborhood, from anyone 
that would like to, you know, try our our goods. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna call on you, ma'am. Oh, I I just want to say I enjoyed the macaroni cookies. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could you tell it was vegan? Yes. You could. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I, yes, I would have brought more samples, but my operations manager, like, Chase, you're giving away too much. So I'm going to bring more next time <laughs> when she lets me. I'm wondering about, like, any sort of, like, you know, folks who are working with you, like, maybe you could have an arrangement with UCD, like, if they could hire some of them. I'm wondering what kind of commitments or arrangements could be made there. I'm so glad you asked that. That's one of the reasons I was excited to talk to this group too, because like I, I just met with the neighborhood, uh, so, uh, sorry, the Oak Park Business Association this morning, Sean from the Business Association, and we are trying to get more connected to the local businesses, like a lot of the ones on Broadway, for example, because we're hoping that they might hire some of our employees after they get in, gain, like you know, in, um, bolstered their resume a little bit through working at. Our goal would be to like have them work at a restaurant or a coffee shop, really anywhere. Like customer service is a transferable skill, mm -hmm. but um, that's the hope. And we've already met with a couple people who like do catering, maybe you might be interested. So our our and we love to hire people who live in the park because it's really nice to work so close to, to where you live. Have, have you considered uh, advertising for First Friday somehow? Yeah. Don't even live here, but they stimulate a lot of business yeah. on the first Friday. You know, there's a, there's a there's a group place and a, you know different stuff. Yeah, and they come and they buy stuff, and uh, so that I think would be of it. But if you're not open at night on Fridays, you know it may not be such a but you're here. We'll have to see what we can do. We're close yeah. by. Yeah, you should take advantage of that. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I I'll yeah. try to make that more of a priority. Yeah. Yeah, we're still on We're still going to like, <laughs> like, 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 Oh, it is? Yeah, I mean, we're still talking about like the farmer's market. We're still getting set up like in our, in the community. But I will definitely put that on the list. I would. Don't want, maybe don't want to cook yet. I think you're going to do it. Presenting people with disabilities who are being uh, discriminated against in the workplace. And I think she came up with the name, or like one of our employees' daughters came up with the name, or something like that. Um, not sure where the cave name came from, but it's stuck. Okay. And I think we are the purple tree now. Have I suggest? All right. Yeah. I wish I had a, I should learn the story. I wonder if there's like a more deeper story. It goes deeper. Yeah, thank you for that.
Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Ten to four. Two o'clock. Ten to two. Ten to two. Ten to two. two. Or ten to four. Ten to two. Ten to two. Ten to four. Some of the stuff that we have planned? Yes. Come on. Come on. Uh, so I want to shout out Summer, too, who's been our amazing yeah. supporter. Yeah, Summer Nays. She's really the brains of it all and is very much in the weeds of everything. But yeah, 10 to 2 is going to be a, a day of a lot of, uh, we're going to have lots of booths and vendors with information about the community, different resources that you can access. We're going to have performances. Um, there's going to be a raffle prizes as well. Last year it was a big hit. We're not going to say what the prizes are just yet, but there's going to be some good stuff, so make sure to go and attend the whole time so you can get a prize. Uh, SMUD is a big partner for us, and we will be, um, they're going to be showcasing their electric cars so you can test run a vehicle. It'll be super fun. It'll be a voucher to go buy uh, food at the farmer's market so you can get um, some goodies from there. Um, obviously, a major thanks to UC Davis Health for being the premier sponsor. Um, the city has also been sponsoring. Uh, we have a lot of different great partners that are making this very uh, event possible. So it's going to be fun. There's going to be music, there's going to be food, entertainment, kid zones, inflatables for kids. So it's a family affair. So we look forward to having you all. And it's free. And it's free. And it's free. <laughs> yes, it's free. All free. <laughs> so each year, uh, been doing this for a while, but then LPNA was doing it, then it switched over to a group that I used to uh, uh, be the executive director for, Web Sacramento, then it kind of came back to LPNA, so it's been in the neighborhood in some form for many, many years. Uh, when we put this on, it's, it's a hard lift. We do it only once a year because it's just so much work to do, but we do it for you. We do it for the community. Uh, so, we really, really want everybody to come out, participate, show up, uh, meet your neighbors. I mean, it's a great place to just come and have fun, relax, and connect. It's not a, it's not a, a, a meeting, in, in, instead it's just more of a collaboration, a, a, a mixer, just a big fun time. So, we work hard to get all the, the uh, vendors to come out, and a lot of coordination with that, and all the partners that kick in, and then we, we do a lot of fundraising. Now you see this empty bucket that's actually always empty. Uh, that is our donations bucket, right? We come here every month, feed you all as best we can, negotiate with the uh, different restaurants and try to make sure that we get as many represented in the neighborhood as possible. Um, and then we try to raise the funds to be able to pay for that. So it's, I'm saying all this to say that it's a lot of hard work, a lot of us come together, but we, we don't want to do it if the community doesn't want it. So when you come, you show up, you contribute in any kind of way you can, it really helps. Uh, so we're looking forward to celebrate Oak Park. Um, let's see, so we talked about, uh, Rosie mentioned the uh, SMUD. They've been a partner with us for years. And has anybody, has anybody owned an electric car? Uh, hey, we got one in the house. All right, cool. Um, so SMUD has, they're going to bring out their fleet. Did anybody drive one the last time that they were here? She yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember one year they had a, uh, a BMW electric car. It was so nice. It was so nice. I was driving that thing. It was like floating. I was like, is this thing on? Yeah. It was so nice. And they let me go around the corner. I said, okay, then I go around one more time. I said, yeah, go ahead. Parked it. Um, got out. I'm looking at it. The guys tell me all these cool things. And then... Busted the bubble and messed it up. He told me the price. So I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, seventy-five thousand. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> but uh, but they have the, the luxury ones. Yes. Uh, they bring out the uh, more uh, cost-effective cars. Um, the sh wait, is it the Bolt Chevy Bolt or Bolt? One of the two. Bolt. 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 Okay. Bolt. So they got those that are, are you know a lot more uh, affordable. Uh, so anyway, they uh, they come out. They want you, then they'll tell you about all the rebates and everything that come along with it. So it's actually good, good education. 
uh, because California is kind of driving in that direction, so it makes sense to kind of pay attention to electric vehicles. Uh, how do you, oh, go ahead. Just, just a couple things to add to that. So one thing I like about the SMUDS EV ride and drive thing they do is that it's not a sales pitch. They're not trying to sell you on the car, they're just trying to make sure you drive it. Right. So it's a, it's a much nicer experience than like going to All a, right. a freaking dealership. Right. 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 So it's like way more chill than that. And they're, I think they're gonna, SMUDS gonna give everyone who completes a ride 10 to 12 market bucks yeah. for oh. the Park Farmers Market. Oh. So you can take a ride over to the Park Farmers Market. SMUD is directly supporting the vendors, right? That was a good thing we worked out, right? Wow. Um, so that you can go grab food, tamales, whatever, at the wow. Farmers Market. And I think Jareen even said she's gonna work with some of the vendors to make sure they have a $10 to $12 yeah, like price item price. each, yeah. nice. some new items. Yeah. So I think that's super okay. important. Um, all right, thank you. Perfect, perfect. Thanks for having that. You know, and, uh, the spot's been a great part. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the community center is having an art exhibit there, too. Oh, really? Green art and sculpture. Oh, cool. Okay. I didn't know that. Nice. Nice. We don't even have a stage in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we want to represent every piece of Oak Park because there's so much history in Oak Park. And today might have been a good time to, to talk about some of that. But um, we want to make sure that we celebrate it every year because this is the most diverse neighborhood in the entire city. So we want to make sure that it represents and shows up that way and we get to uh, just really recognize all the beauty that comes along with that. Yeah. Uh, is there other questions? Yes. And, and this is a key point. What well, impressed me actually was we actually powered our whole event utilizing an electric vehicle mm -hmm. with a Ford Lightning truck that came out. Mm -hmm. and it had, I couldn't believe it had 10 outlets in it. And what happened was our generator went out. We had a generator with a big blow up uh, soccer field that uh, the soccer company came out. And the guy said, oh, well, we can power this whole thing. So we power the stage, we power everything from this one. Really? Yeah. Come out, see this. It's really something to see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have music, we'll have DJ, uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, are we going to have haircuts this year? I know last year we did. OK, OK, haircuts. I'll be the first in line. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the kids zone. So tell us about the kids zone. Yeah, so it's uh, going to be a big team. We have the like, soccer stuff. There's okay. bubble machines that will be powered by the show as well. So a variety of different activities that kids can play and hang out in, in the center so we can save, you know, all this stuff. But nice. yeah, a full kids zone. We're excited for it. Petra is my co yeah, uh, there's another powerhouse behind uh, all this organization, so thanks, Petra. There will also be a little like, soccer fiddle, tons of bubbles. Um, okay. <laughs> it's important for you to do that. It'll be fun. Okay, so there's a question over here. She said, are you guys having a basketball competition? It's our guys, right? Our, it's our event. It's I all of our But I know what you mean. Um, I, I, is the basketball competition part of this? <laughs> but if someone wants to volunteer, maybe I have right. <laughs> There is a basketball court right there, so we might be able to make something happen. Um, so bring your uh, bring your basketball and your headband, and maybe we can make something happen. Volleyball, maybe. Oh yeah, that would be nice too. It's really nice, you know, concurrent with the farmers market. So there's just going to be a lot going on mm -hmm. in that area. Just a nice way to spend your Saturday. So will alcohol be served at this? <laughs> no. Good question. Giant will be plenty full. So we have in the past though. We have we have had a beer garden in the past. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we did. Uh, yeah. 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 But not. But uh, yeah, you just walk down to the. Uh, Ten a.m. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lots of wine. Let's see what else about the event. Anything else we need to say? Say again. Market bucks. Adrian mentioned market bucks. You want to add any more detail? Okay, cool. So got the market bucks. And the pool is free. Okay, the pool's open too. Yeah. What pool? What a pool. All right. That big park has a pool. Yes, it's a pool. That's the one she loves. Yeah, it has a skate park, a pool, a uh, basketball court, pickleball, yeah. uh, disco. Wait a minute, hold up before we go any further. <laughs> the pool, where is the damn pool? It's <laughs> over there, just way in the back. Yeah. And it's going to be open? My pleasure, yeah. it's open. Oh, yeah. it's open. Oh, yeah. it's free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, ask me on my house. <laughs> 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 You've been here 40 
here she didn't right. know that. <laughs> <laughs>
That's the cheapest day, isn't it? Oh, no, the cheapest day is Thursday. You don't want to go to Thursday. But the least expensive day is Thursday. Students pay $10, general admission is $15. Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, that's when they run the place, except Sunday. It was open at 1, the place starts at 2, and that's all right. And two, they run over right. about three to four weekends, depending on what's going on in that month. And uh, make sure to look them up online. What was the website again? Celebrationarts.net, or you can call 455 Arts. Get more information. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
if there's any departments too that y'all think we, we want to see us, 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 aside from those I called out, um, we want to let Adrian know, um, and then we'll make sure they're getting them out there. All right, thank you, thank you. are important because maybe we don't get time directly with a mayor of the city, right? Because you're just busy doing your thing and so this is an open opportunity. We need to uh, take advantage of that also for uh, the council member in the area. And, you know, the decisions they make um, rely a lot on what they feel uh, the residents want and the passion that comes from, from what they want. Uh, I remember it was uh, Mayor Steinberg's very first day in office whatever day that was a long time ago, uh, he said, hey, I'm not going to City Hall. Instead, I'm going to spend a week out in the streets just talking to people. And his very first day, he came to Oak Park. And we made him, met him at, um, it was, I think it was Broadway Coffee at that time. Uh, so, so we met there, and then he walked up the street, and we, we talked to him and talked about some concerns. And there was a, an issue with uh, Barbara Range, who um, had Brickhouse Park out with remember Barbara, she moved to LA, uh, but she she was really voicing her concern about uh, the area right in front of Brick House and how it's hard across the street, real dangerous, a lot of car accidents, that kind of thing. And so he said, hey, I'm going to work on that. She pressed him hard. It was his very first day in office, right? But she was on him. And now, if you look, the improvements were made. And so that's just because a resident voiced their concern, showed passion, and it came to be. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things that have come past his ears that, that didn't get done, but, you know, it's, it's, always, it's always an option, and when it's the right thing to do, then a lot of times it can happen, but it happens, the start of it is that, that resonant voice. So feel free to make it out there and uh, address your concerns and hear about what's going on. Stay in the loop. Yes. I have a question. What happened to the Brickhouse Gallery? Because it's empty, as you said. Well, it's up, it's up for uh, commercial lease. Commercial the owner passed the baton to his daughter. His daughter didn't want to continue doing brick house art and stuff. Mm -hmm. So Barbara left, she went back home, and it's up for commercial lease as it stands now. It's been empty since that way. Hmm. And the owner was uh, also owner of the uh, Paramount Pottery Bar on 24th Street. All right, thank you for that information. Yes, sir. Light is what Mike was talking about. That the mayor put up a push button light. Mm -hmm. It's not a traffic light. It's one of those crosswalk lights. Mm -hmm. It's like one side of the door. So we heard there's a great town hall with the current mayor. We're actually planning an event with the next mayor exactly. um, mm -hmm. of Sacramento, mm -hmm. the city of Sacramento. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we're working on a flyer right now, uh, but October 3rd, in place of this meeting, means okay. we're not going to be here. I know you, you, you like to know we're not going to be in this room. Uh, we're going to be at the Guild Theater, and we're going to be having a debate night between Assemblymember Kevin McCarty and Dr. Flo Kofer. Wow. Um, so it's going to be a not a it's, <laughs> it's, that old so, so what, what I love about this is it is not a it is, this is not a community forum or a candidate forum this is a debate we're going to have a moderator uh, they're going to be asked not the same questions but different questions just like the presidential debate that maybe you guys saw um, so we're, we're really looking forward to it this is something that we've been doing for years and years and years is having these forums so that you all can engage with um, folks who are elected leaders or who want to be elected leaders. And so uh, I think what we're going to do is release uh, uh, pretty soon a form that you guys can use to submit questions. We're going to synthesize those questions, um, kind of see like similar ones. We might like reword them to kind of bring them all together. Um, and then our moderator is going to ask those questions. So it's not going to be the public asking questions. It needs to be a little bit more organized than that. Uh, but we will have a, a skilled moderator, a professional moderator. Um, so that's on October 3rd, 6 to 7.30 is our tentative time for it. Flyer is coming soon. Right, is, that, uh, is that on Stockton Boulevard? Guild Theater. Where's the Guild Theater? Right? Uh, right in the thick of it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Sheila, it's right next to the pool. <laughs> Yeah, you're nice.
My name is Caleb, I'm a pastor here in the neighborhood. Um, we put on an event every year called uh, Back School Block Party, and we do it in partnership with Highlands Charter and my mayor, Katie Nichol, and uh, we have a bunch of people come out. Uh, this year we've got 2,500 bags of groceries uh, at McClatchy Park on August 24th. On top of that, there'll be barbers there. We have like three inflatables, four different inflatables for kids, five around, we walk around, taking pictures, having fun. And the community resource partners will be there. Everything that's there is free. Lunch included, uh, 1,500 hot dogs uh, for that day too. So, but we, we just said, hey, uh, we wanted to fill a need in the community and like lots of great backpack drives. Celebrating Park is amazing. It was kind of an inspiration on that. Uh, and for us, we said, man, let's, let's partner in uh, adult education and adult resourcing, uh, which is kind of a unique thing to have this time of year. And so we'd love to have you guys come out for you to share what's going on. Obviously, it's uh, 2,500 bags of groceries means we're, we're ready for a lot of people to come and uh, take care of people, take care of our city. So, um, so invite people out. If you um, are a community resource partner and some somebody you, you resource and you want to connect, uh, talk to me. We're still, we still have a couple spots that are left. We don't have a ton left. We have a couple of vendor spots that are left. So thank you. Where? Ah, yeah. What is that? Okay. <laughs> Where is that? It's at the Flatchy. The Flatchy okay. Park. Where's it going? Sophomore. He could have 
you know, I actually got his AA degree. And so I just wanted to introduce myself. I will be back. I will be at Celebrate Oak Park. I'm, you know, often in Oak Park. I was here for Cowboy, the Black Cowboy event. Um, I know that there's an event tomorrow night as well. I'm starting to get lost in, in days, but know that when I'm on the board, I invite you to come to the board meetings. Those are public. It is a community college. There are four community colleges. And what does community mean? It means you. And so, you know, many of you probably went to a community college, and if you did not, you know, come onto the campus. It is your campus. It is not a place that's siloed or ivory, ivory tower. It's meant for the community. And so I'm running for the Los Rios Board of Trustees because I want to advance uh, what we do for students, and I want to continue to advocate for community college and quality community colleges. Go ahead. So I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, what are your, aside from what you've already provided, information you've already provided us, what are the things that you want to achieve by doing this? What, you, what is your vision that you want to put forth as a board member for the community college? Policies that work. So it takes, on average, students six to eight years to transfer to a four-year institution or to graduate. That is unacceptable, that we need to provide avenues for students to, to actually finish in two years and transfer. So there is legislation, um, AB 1440, that talks about transfer. Um, I am a Sac State graduate. The only reason why I was able to graduate in four years was going to community college in the summer. Um, it's less expensive, it's accessible, and community colleges are teaching institutions, and it's focused on teaching. Sometimes students aren't quite ready to go. So my background is, I was an educator, um, always an educator. <laughs> Take notes, <laughs> always an educator. Um, so I've been in higher education for 25 years. Uh, currently I'm on the University Foundation Board, so those of you who Google me, I, I know that people are Googling me and starting to look at me. <laughs> Google away. <laughs> you know, so you know, you know, foundation Board, what is that? So the Foundation Board, the Sac State Foundation Board, governs how monies come into the college other than um, budget that comes from the state of California. So it's uh, corporations that donate money to or they give money to the college for scholarships, for student scholarships to make um, school more affordable. And many people do not apply for those scholarships. So, and it's also on the community college level too, we provide scholarships for students, but it's also the FAFSA that students, there's CalGrant money that they don't have to pay back so really what it is, is for me, it's about information. Always give, being able to give information. On any given week, I'm not on the board yet, but on any given week, I'm taking students to a counselor and, and saying, here's a counselor that's gonna give you your plan for two years transfer or career education. So that's another thing that I'm for, is that everybody is not meant to go into an office space or work from home with anywhere where you work is that some people want to do construction, some people want to be a sheet metal, some people want to be a plumber. And we provide avenues in terms of career education and working with the unions too. So I've been endorsed by um, local um, Los Rios Community College Federation of Teachers in SEIU as well. I'll be honest with you, the endorsements are important, but more important to me is you because you are the voters. And so feel free, I have information, I'll leave my number, and that is my personal cell. Um, people will always have access to me. I, I am in the community a lot. Some of you have seen, seen me already. People are like, I'm starting to see Dr. Collette. I do hold a doctorate, I do hold a doctorate in educational leadership, but I always say that. You know, if you put a math problem in front of me right now, I'll tell you that I'll close my eyes and look at it and go, okay and then try to solve it. Um, but what it is is that I'm an advocate for everybody has some type of disability. Um, you know, if you take my classes, I can't see a thing. And so we need to be able to provide equity, and all equity means is just doing the right thing for everyone so that they can be successful. So I'll leave it there. I know I've probably taken more time. <laughs> Give me your card. <laughs> Do you I need your card. Well, I'll give you I'll give you a bookmark, and then okay. I have I have cards. I mean, it's your phone number. Well, that one doesn't have my phone number on it. But she, oh, I'll see you on Saturday. I see you in church. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what happens at church. People ask me about community college at church too. I said, can we wait until after the service? <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for that. Any other questions? Um, because they're giving me time. I I really have been coming to the neighborhood associations because. These are the people 
people who really are concerned about the neighborhood. Yes, Sac City is, you know, the local community college here, but many students um, take light rail and take classes at Sac City, American River College, and then go out to Folsom as well to get out in two, two years. And that's another thing. We need to be able to provide general education for students, but sometimes people just want to take a ceramics class, and, and those classes will still be available for students. So I'm an advocate for what is it that the community wants to see in their community college? Imagine that, <laughs> you know, that you ask the community what they want to see, but also providing um, uh, ability for if you have the minimum qualifications. People often ask me, how do I get on with Los Rios Community College District? You know, what are the qualifications to teach? And I'll be honest with you, I can probably rattle off most things <laughs> off the top of my head, but I also will research and get back to people. Any other questions? That I, I will be back. You'll see me again and you know, stop me. I'll try to answer it. And if I don't have an answer, I'll come back to you. Question well, that. I actually don't have a question, but I do have a statement because I have been around a lot of places in Sacramento and you have been there. You have made yourself available to a diverse group of people and multiple neighborhoods. And so I'm not a politician, I'm not a campaigner. However, when people start saying education, because California doesn't do a great job of that, I actually work for the Department of Education and whatnot, but I have a granddaughter that just graduated in June of this year in Reno with an AA and already accepted into college in October of last year. So California, we have to do things a little differently and way better, and we're just losing too many of our kids. So my hat's off to you. If you need me to campaign, you won't need me to campaign. <laughs>
go to the website and then. I don't know how to do that. We'll talk in church Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>
funding is through Proposition 98. And this is where the trustees come in in terms of policies that make sense. But one of the things is, is when you vote for someone like me, what you're saying is these are policies that make sense because when you look at your tax bill, it has Los Rios on your tax bill, which means that, you know, I'm a public servant, I work for you, you know, on the board. And if I have to do something that's unpopular, that, you know, you can ask me, you will have access to me. Trustees right now don't hold office hours, but I will. I mean, I've held office hours as a faculty member, but this kind of conversation, and I was an anticipation. You know, I'm just going off the top of my head. Um, okay. uh, but, no, I, I appreciate the opportunity, and you know, I just got to write on time about announcements. And I was like, okay, I'll make the announcement because I'm, I'm always going to be respectful of the practices of any, you know, association or institution. So when I come somewhere, I, I'm, I'm prepared to follow rules. I do follow rules, but I'm also someone who likes to disrupt systems as well when they don't work for everyone. And that kind of gets back to your question of what is it that I would bring? I'm hoping if there is an opponent, I will recommend that we have a um, debate, yes, you know, debate of sorts. I'll be honest with you, I don't like current debate. I've learned parliamentary debate, um, and and it is not let me just annihilate this other person. It is let's present arguments in ways where people can understand, and that allowing human beings to ask. I know. I'm scared of y'all. No, no, no. You know what it is? It's actually when, you know, you're done. It's when people are done. That's what you just tried to make. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You know what? We, we can use that strategy here a little more often. <laughs> Insurance necessary, free service for kids, 
Uh, we want healthy kids in the community, so we offer primary care, or your sports physical, or um, health screenings, vision screenings, immunizations. That clinic takes place on the first and third Saturdays at Hiram Johnson Community Center, fired up here. Uh, so yeah, real quick, yeah. uh, I know with pediatrics, I've learned something that was surprising to me, but it goes up into like a much later age. Oh. Um, and, and you tell me if they have an age limit, but um, because I know someone who was seeing their pediatrician at like age 16. So is, does it go that far? Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, got it. Okay, good. Good so if you're interested or want to share that information, yep. Um, the city voted on Tuesday to refund the Salvation Army and the housing stabilization programs that are um, supported sort of as part of the Agnes Square Community Benefits Partnership Agreement. So there's more funding available for um, community members who are income qualified and need help um, catching up on their rent, or their utility bills, or maybe they're oh. displaced and need to come back to the community. <laughs> so the phone number here um, for Salvation Army, they have new funds available. Sure. Um, also, step up, step up on Second right. also has a similar program. Um, so you could take fire for each organization and call them and see who calls you back first. Um, oh, celebrate it. I'm back. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so the new 14-story tower, where physically is it located? Yes. And does it take over the old hospital? And for you to, that don't know, they're getting ready to do a new 14-story hospital and two helicopter pads. And yes, it is. Um, it, that's not my project, um, but I do. I did read the news and the press release. Okay. Also, um, so it's a replacement hospital tower because a lot of the hospital is um, so old now that it doesn't meet the new seismic height requirements. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to build a new hospital tower to keep and maintain our um, current level of service. It adds like only like 45 or 49 total bed spaces in the hospital, so it really is mostly a replacement. Um, it's going in on X Street, kind of where the emergency room exit entrance was, where the ambulance. Yeah, between X and B and X. Yeah. 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 They've been prepping it for a while. And you can see, like, there's a big pile of dirt there now. So um, that's what's happening. And they had a big groundbreaking ceremony on Monday of last week. Yeah. Um, they've been doing make ready work, like all the rerouting of utilities and stuff for two years. Um, it's going to take them another seven years to build it. It will open in 2030. As you can imagine, a modern hospital is a pretty complicated building to build. Um, so, yeah, 14 or 17 stories, I'm not sure. 14. 14, thank you. Yeah, any questions? Yeah. So, uh, up until recently, I lived on, on 3rd, right across from Agnes Square. I yeah. got to see everything coming up, and I kind of have two questions. Um, one, what's the current timeline for you know the core of that project in that particular area approaching harm reduction and like Walgreens and stuff for that to be finished? And two, um, I was curious because I think um, there's going to be some housing going in at a former UC Davis building. Has UC Davis been working on maybe acquiring other properties like closer to the Walgreens or doing anything else outside of the current bounds of Aggie Square as it is now? Yeah, those are great questions. The build, the first two buildings, the big shiny glass ones, that's the tall uh, buildings, will open in the first part of 2025. Wow. So kind of we get the keys, um, hopefully early February, and it will take us many months to move everybody in. Some of the people moving into those buildings are scientists with like active experiments. So we have to time it just right in terms of their experiments to like get them across the street and make sure we sell this. Um, so it'll take us many months to move in. We expect um, in May of 2025 to have a really big grand opening celebration. Um, so the first two buildings opened in the first quarter of 2025. The residential building, it's the apartment building that backs right up and makes Stockton Boulevard. Um, it's about 192 apartment units. And um, of those 49, our student housing is going to 
runs. So it'll be for undergraduate, graduate students, medical students, people who are at the hospital for rotation, like 10 week period, because those people have always had a hard time figuring out their housing for 10 weeks. Um, so the other half of the building, kind of the long part of the building, will be market rate housing um, through the developers selected partner who specializes in apartment complexes next to university campuses, or in our case, on a university campus. Um, and those will be available first to um, students, and if units are available, faculty and staff in the university. If units are left, Aggie Square affiliates, so private industry people working at Aggie Square, and then if units are left, the general public. They're very high amenity units. They're, they're not at all. They're like market rate, high amenity kind of expensive apartments. But we have never had housing on the Sacramento campus, so we don't actually know what the demand is. Um, so we'll see. We don't know if we'll have lots of apartments available for the community and general public, or if all of it will be taken by students. Um, the other question you have is connection and nearby impacts. We have no plans right now in our long range development plan to acquire any additional property. Uh, okay. Everything that UCAs currently has is that 144 acre site that used to be the county hospital and the state fairgrounds. Um, there's one building south of Broadway, we call it the Broadway building, um, that we own. And there are lots of properties that we lease on like, the west side of Stockton, but we have no plans in our long range development plan to acquire new property. Any of the building that we're going to do um, to either serve UCAs Health or Adam Square is all shown with impacts. Oh, all right. Yeah. We are extending 3rd Avenue from where it ends right now at Stockton. It's yeah. going to continue into Abbey Square, oh. and that's the main entrance to the new park. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The access to the parking structure will be off Stockton and not the backside on 49. Oh, all right. All right, and we uh, just have a few minutes left, so we'll take one more question, and yeah. then we want to see if anyone else has an answer. And I'll stay as long as possible, like, uh, to answer questions as long yeah. as we I, I have a quick question. I don't know if you can answer this, but if the new hospital is replacing the old one, is there a plan for, is the old one going to be still a hospital, or is it going to be torn down, or is there anything happening with that, or is that just not known yet? Yeah, it's not, doesn't comply with seismic requirements, like earthquake oh, well. guidelines, so... I think the plan is to decant people out of the old hospital into the new, and then there'll be a big planning process to like remove the old hospital and then figure out like how does the campus grow or what does the campus look like into the future. Okay. Yeah. But it's not really usable space. In fact, we've already vacated the old North South edition of the hospital, like the really old part with that big circular ramp. I don't know if all of many of you remember the it was like the emergency exit ramp, and it was like a big circle, and people used to ride down it on a wheelchair. Or <laughs> so, anyway, um, many people are sad because that part of the hospital is now closed. Like, people yeah. Thank you. All right, thank yeah. you, thank you. Um, any other announcements before we get out of here? No. All right. Want to celebrate our park? Uh, hold on one second. When to when celebrate our park? Next to the pool, right? <laughs> what, what time? 10 to 2. All right. See y'all there. Hold on before we go. We got one more announcement. All right. This is just a general housekeeping announcement. Um, I'm a proud member of this neighborhood association. And one thing that we created, I think two years ago, three years ago, during COVID, is uh, we created a uh, program for Old Park Kids. And what we do is we provide direct uh, bill assistance to uh, our residents in Oak Park, right? So, because we realize that, you know, sometimes people are down, just small amounts of money for bills and things of that nature, and they just need help, right, just to get over that bump. So, that bucket, uh, you know, it represents uh, kind of, um, you know, where we go. And remember, this is direct to, to, to uh, neighbor services. So, you, if there's an application process, you let us know what the bill is. We partner with SMUD, in fact. So a lot of the bills, we realized that a lot of the bills that needed to be paid were, um, you know, with bills. So we ask that you give. Uh, there's a process to give online. Our treasurer is here. She can give you more information on how to kind of get that in. But we want to ramp that up. 
We've done a really good job. I don't know how much we've given out thus far. 20, 20 grand. Up to, upwards of 20 grand in two years. Maybe no. Two or three years, right? So we know that it works. And this is how we tie ourselves to our community. We just don't talk about it, we be about it. In my current position, I serve a lot of neighborhood associations. And to be honest, I hate to say it, a lot of people wouldn't dare take something like this on, right? But we thought it important to do it um, because we know the diversity of our community and we know that people sometimes hit rough spots. So, if you would be so inclined uh, to, if not tonight, you know, uh, make a donation or you can go to our site and make it online. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks again for coming out. We're going to do this again next month. Uh, we'll always be here except for when we do our uh, candidate forms. But every other month we're right here and uh, we'll try to teach the best we can. And uh, thanks for coming out. Yeah.